Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to be showcasing my new sound driver for the Sega Mega Drive system. And um, as you can see, I've actually recorded this from hardware. Um, I'll get into reasons why at some point soon. Um, but I first want to apologize for the poor quality, the video quality in particular. I've had to record this from my Model 1 Mega Drive 50Hz system into a VCR into a cheap knockoff Chinese device into my old machine whose CPU is not very fast. So I apologize about the poor uh, the poor video quality, but the audio quality is pretty solid and that's what's important. That's what we're after. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But as you can see I've applied this sound driver to this particular ROM for a specific reason. Um, I'm going to get into this reason at some point soon after I demonstrate the sound driver. Now, first of all, um, to go on record, I've already released a version of the sound driver some months ago, I think it was nearly a year ago actually. Um, it's called Dual PCM. It can play back two samples, any two samples, anywhere in the ROM, of any size, at any time. Um, I've already released a version of this, but this is an improved version. There's a few bugs that have been fixed, there's a few um, improvements being made to the quality, um, some 68 key time has been reduced, and so on, and there's a few neat additional features which I'm going to show to you today. So first of all, the sound driver, so you've got the, the standard samples, you've got the kick, snare, orchestra, hats, with a steel drum, I'm going to be quiet so you can actually hear the samples. <laughs> I like that sample. So as you can see, it can play back samples um, quite modestly. Uh, here's an extra long sample. I'm also going to play a few samples on the other channel as well, just to demonstrate. Play both at the same time. stop these right now. So as you can see it, it pretty much is the same driver as before but there is a difference to this one. Um, the first difference is um, you've probably already heard by now this pad instrument. This is not a really long sample. This is actually two small samples. The first sample is the beginning part where the volume feeds in and the second part is just a small continuous playback sample that loops over and over and over again. The driver is looping the sample, playing it over and over and over again, infinite number of times. So you can play it as long as you like. I'm going to have it end here. Now some musicians out there will find this very very useful. I know that some of you record real life instruments and you like to loop the end of it to have it continuous forever and ever. So that's what that's for. We also have in this version the ability to control the pitch. But it's a very gradual... It's very smooth. It isn't like instant. And the benefit behind this is that you can play the samples at detune, you can play them with LFO, vibrato, modulation, and the pitch actually goes up pretty high. C hundred is a very, very generous amount you can play with there. You can also play individual notes as well because of this. Um, I've actually got a table full of all the notes that I've made which um, you can use if you need to. Um, when I release this driver I will release that as well. You can also play the individual channels at their own individual pitches, as you can probably, you've probably figured this out already, the reason why I've got two here is because while one's playing at a high note, you can play the other one at a different note. If it up 
play them both as pet. And then reads the other one to nearly match it. down to zero actually. <laughs> I bet that one at sort of five that good. We've also got volume control here as well, so you can make them quieter. Very gradually quiet. But I've also supported the ability to make them louder because I received quite a few complaints that the samples were too quiet. So now you can make them louder. You can play both of them at loud as well without it overflowing. It won't overflow, it will cap. So you don't have to worry about that either. I'm going to put these back down to zero because I don't want them that loud. <laughs> I should have had a button that put it down to zero realistically. Never mind. So you've established here we can play them at different pitches, we can play them at um, different volumes. Um, there is another benefit here I'm going to show. I'm going to play it with this um, piano tune. You can always see it's at quite a high pitch, so I'm going to lower this pitch. And as you can see, we can make it lower than zero, we can bring it really right down. So you can play low notes as well as high notes as well. And bring it all the way down until it reaches a complete stop. But it gets better. We can play them in reverse. Those astute individuals among you will probably realize that not only can you replay them in reverse, you can also play them in any pitch in reverse. And it goes quite high in reverse as well. And this can be quite handy at times actually. I'm going to play a sample in reverse, a few samples in reverse so you can hear them. Why not? She sounds quite scary. <laughs> Put this on back to zero. Now, there are other benefits you can put to use for this, such as uh, certain phasing effects. So I'm, I'm going to play this uh, sample here called Mystic Composer. I'm going to put it too high. I would say about maybe 40. If I play another sample... Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sync them up very carefully here. the wrong way. No, I'm going the wrong way. Derp. There you go. Very close, nearly there. There we go. And now we're ahead. Bring it back. 
listen to that phasing effect, it's lovely. But we can also do some echoing as well. Let's put this down to say 20. Now it sounds like an echo. Turn that off for now. I'm just here to demonstrate that there's a whole range of different possibilities now. Now that you've got pitch control, volume control, reverse or playback, and so on, there's a whole range of possibilities. So getting on to the, the, the main purpose as to why I've recorded it from hardware, so you, you're probably wondering why. I'll tell you. Many Mega Drive games that play on the Mega Drive and play sample data tend to have um, a major quality loss. There's some sort of horrible noise that occurs. And this is because there's a whole load of Z80 stops. The Z80 is usually the sub-CPU that's usually responsible for playing back audio. You can play back with the main CPU, but that's neither here nor there for this moment. But it's the Z80, if it's playing back sample data and you have to stop the Z82 for whatever reason, you're going to end up with these horrible, horrible choppy noises. And I'll, I'll demonstrate it to you, in fact. Uh, the same thing can happen when the DMA transfer is going, because the Z80 cannot access the 68K memory space when it wants to copy the samples through. Um, so I'm going to turn DMA on while a sample is playing. We'll play, um, play Mr. Composer again, because why not? Turn DMA on. We'll increase the damage uh, transfer rate. You can probably hear just about 2,000 bytes of transfer. It's starting to sound a lot like other Mega Drive games. So if you've ever had um, some kicks and snares, I play a voice. Ready, ready. Oop, too high. <laughs> uh, I play that back to zero. There we go. Ready. Ready, and it sounds ready, ready. absolutely horrible. A lot of games suffer from this. Um, I'm going to play uh, the piano chords. You just hear how horrible that sounds. We've got a new um, streaming buffering method. Um, the old version has this system put in place as well. So the old version I've already released has this support. Uh, but this one's been improved slightly. So turn it on, and there you go, nice and clear. Now obviously there is a certain limit, so even when you increase the DMA size really, really high, so nearly all of the blank, you can hear the quality starting to go, but at least it's not as bad as this. But that's the reason why I wanted to show you on um, on a 60 hertz system because this was specifically designed to handle 60 hertz. Because uh, 60 hertz, you have less time during V-Blank. So if a game is going to lag on a 60 hertz machine. You want to be able to at least to have a high quality audio playing at its maximum potential. Um, 60 Hz can play roughly about 1C100 and something. I think it's like 1C uh, D8 or something like that of um, bytes to transfer. So this driver will cover the whole of 60 Hz, and most people tend to play with 60 Hz. This will cover majority of 50 Hz, but like I said, the quality isn't perfect. But it's better than this. 
and that's the reason why I needed to show you on hardware, just to demonstrate that the system is working, it works and sounds wonderful on hardware. And I'm gonna stop this for the meantime. I plan to release this sometime soon, uh, once I've figured out a few other things, there's a few things I need to implement, such as the uh, the YM2612 Q list system, and um, there's a few fine tuning that needs to be done, a few things that need to be fixed up and, and solved. Um, but it should be released um, considerably soon, I'm going to say maybe a month or two, we we'll see. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching my video, I hope the demonstration has um, given you enough information to take home with you, and I hope you're as excited as I am. Thank you very much.